keep on going. That's right. You keep on moving. Let's take care of this and look at the kayak a little bit. So this is the Boss 12 SS and let's see, I'm going to start with the basics. It's got a seat here, a very comfortable seat that folds down and if I loosen the Side strap, it holds all the way back and locks back for storage purposes or stacking. Um, and the seat does pop off for travel. And it has an elevation. I was up. Now I'm down. See, I'm sitting a little bit lower. Put pedals. And easy enough, you, you can see my feet down here. Pull it forward. Push it back. They seem to snap in like super easy. Um, as I'm just looking through here, it came with handle on both sides, left and right, front and back. But I'll say the two over here, I can't do much with them. I am not strong enough to lift this kayak up over my head and haul it around and lift it from the sides, rip it up, and slide it onto my car. My other kayaks I can absolutely find, no problem at all. This one is heavy enough that I cannot do that. But I'm a little dude, so bigger dude could probably do it, no problem. Uh, it came with the rails here, and on this one I actually put the tie-off for a rope, and I specifically am using that for an anchor. It did not come with an anchor, but uh, I have the anchor line going back. All the way back, I have a little hoop, and that little hoop lets the anchor be off towards the back. That way, I face with the way of the wind or the current, whichever it is that's happening. Um, and that's how I am facing this way. So, if I tied it off to the side and I was in a strong moving current, that current would slowly but surely pull, 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 and possibly flood me, roll me. I've had it happen with my normal kayak before. So, don't anchor off the direct side, anchor off the front or the back. If you anchored off the front, I'd be facing that way because my back end would drift around in that direction because that's the way of the current and the wind is actually blowing that way too. Um, kayak paddle holder. It actually came with this paddle. I don't know if I like it or not. It honestly could have been like a foot longer on either side because by the time I'm reaching down, I'm putting the sides to get much depth or I'm reaching down and over not used to that and on either side here it has the front bungee holders for the paddle it dangles it down off to the side about this low is the lowest it's going to go um and that's fine i mean it does touch the water in the front or the back it'll collect the weeds 
Um, oops, I've got the same thing going over here. I came with both of these. One concern I have is, let's say I'm fishing, I get something on, it's full on line around, and it gets the line between the paddle and the kayak. Probably not a good thing, but that could happen with the one I added to. So I actually added this paddle holder over here. And it's just a couple of screws that throw it over the place. And slide it forward or backwards, depending on what you're after. Fits in there, locks in there pretty good. And then there's a fun piece to help hold it in a little bit better. Um, that's the one I've been using. I've been liking it up here more. But if you're a longer person, you have to keep in mind that this style is hitting my foot right here. So if I twist it a little bit, it's left in the way. If I slide it down that way, it's even less on the way. The button up in it up here is hitting my foot. I probably could have put it on this ankle part here, but then it's hanging off the side again. So enough said there. It has this comfortable foamy pad. Um, it's pretty noise. If I'm barefoot, maybe I would like that pad better. But I've seen some reviews where that pad fills up really easy, and they said to try to reattach or glue it down. Um, things and stuff here. Let me move this giant net. I'm not sure how that's going to work out, because this net actually, if I caught big ol' muskie, I have to fold it open. Pull that down. You can see it's already kind of stuck up on itself. And get this fish in the net while I'm battling the fish on that board. So, I don't know, maybe a no net option is even better. Just get it up to the side of the boat and grab it. I'm not sure yet on that. Gonna get this out of the way. Plenty of storage, that's for sure. I got plenty of tech space. I could probably put another person sitting right up there in the front and treat it like a new. So, these, they're called scuppers. I don't know, these holes that go down for draining water. Uh, I think there's eight of them. There's two here. I don't see any in the back, but I think they're covered up or under the seat. But there's either six or eight. They don't come through. The plastic is solid all the way through, so they're not going to drain any water unless you drill out the holes yourself. I drilled out the holes, and I think I need to drill out bigger holes. So I drilled out small ones, and the water doesn't drain very quick. In fact, I kind of power washed this off yesterday, and the water drained so slowly that some foam build up in here and it stops the water from draining completely. So there's that. Doesn't have a good spot to hold your drink. But I got another track here. I can out a drink holder on it. There are front and back compartments. And inside that compartment, each one comes with a little bag like this. And it also comes with these plugs. In case, for some reason, you don't want the water to drain out, you can plug those. In my mind, I can't think of a single reason why I, why I would want the water to stay in, but there must be a reason. Because they wouldn't provide something that they spent money on. Comes with um, there's another one in the bag for the one in the back. They're identical. If anything falls down here in the compartment, it can roll all the way to the front, all the way to the back. It can go absolutely anywhere. So, I feel like this little holder, like flimsy plastic in there, and also it just barely sits on top. There, it falls right in. That can slide. Also. So, caution with that. But they do seem to lock fairly tight, like maybe even water resistant. Uh, there are rod holders. There's two here, two in back where I have, on either side, you can see it, like where I have my rod right now. I'll give them some credit for those because the musky rod here 
big old grip on it right here and it fits right down the side no problem so and they're fairly deep nothing's popping out of it or anything like that uh, bungee. I don't know if it can see straight down here or not, but there are six total clamps for the bungees. Nice and strong. And I have measuring tape attached to mine so I can pull it out easy if I need to at retract. I've got a solar panel and a cord that runs up to this camera. And you probably can't see either one of them, which is okay. It comes with this little fishing pole holder it's solid enough of a holder you have to line it up there's a little groove and i don't haven't figured out the lining up yet so i just kind of drop it in and it drops in place with whatever direction you're trying to point it and uh get, for what it's worth it does spin closed so if you have a pole small enough there's no way this is going to do it that will not fit through there but if you have a rod small enough you can slide it in, lock it closed so that it won't pull out. I only brought this and had it attached for show. I probably won't use this one much. I have another one. I will hold this rod that I can mount on the track just fine. A uh, very, very front tip, there is a drain hole. So if the inside gets water in it somehow, uh, hopefully it doesn't, but I guess there's ways that it does. You can drain the kayak there. Uh, plenty of space and storage like I said, but, but I also have life vest, a backpack, and another storage compartment identical to this one. And in the very back there's another drain plug, so you can store it if water builds up. There is enough space with the bungees and with the storage, and like I would even put stuff in watertight bags if I was trying to do this. Like I could easily fit stuff on this kayak for a multi-day trip. I could put it in waterproof bags and shove it up inside in the back and then the front. And then you still have the bags that you can fill that are for the storage compartments. Those bungees, my, my carry-on for an airport could easily fit inside those bungees. Uh, there's just plenty of space. And you just seen how much I can move around. Like this is very stable. I'm not gonna like stand on the edge and jump off of it, but I got a feeling I probably could swim around, get back on super easy. Um, and that's the main reason I bought this kayak. I saw some other reviews that just talked about how stable this is, and I don't want to be falling out of this while I'm fishing. I don't want to be tipping this thing over it and losing all my shit. So, so far I'm happy with it. I will say as far as paddling goes it moves hard like it's not at all like a normal kayak it moves like a log through the water as i'm going against the wind going against the current um it's work definitely definitely work and i wouldn't want to be in a river situation where i have to fight the current for a long ways to get back to my vehicle that would be exhausting and hard um just regular paddling like right here it's super calm right now it tracks pretty good, but it's still harder paddling than what a normal everyday kayak is. I wasn't sure what to expect because I've never been on a sit-on kayak before like this. I've only been in sit-in kayaks fishing, so it's a little bit more than what I thought it would be, to be honest. But not complaining about it because I will sacrifice the paddling ease for the stability. It's worth it to me to know that I'm stable and I'm not going to. I totally skipped the brightest thing on the whole kayak. You have this handle here. The purpose of this, I guess, is so that you can mount your feet and hold yourself up to stand up. I don't know if it's necessary. I don't use it for that. I don't use it at all. I thought about just removing it, but then it's not like it's in the way. But one smart thing they did is they added a measuring tape. It goes up to 15 inches. So it's long enough for measuring illegal size bass, um, walleye, catfish, big perch, something like that. Not long enough to measure a legal size keeping northern pike or musky. Um, I think there's catfish that you can keep at 15. So I don't need this part. And 
the slides off super easy. Worried about losing it in the wind on the drive. And also, like, this is camouflage. Like, why are we sticking something that sticks out and is so bright on something that's camouflaged? If I wanted bright and shiny, I would have bought a bright blue or something. I, I think I'm going to leave it off. I will never use a 15-inch ruler on here. That's why I bought a 16-inch one. Um, I can't think of anything else. Um, the bottom is kind of ripple-shaped, concave, indented. I'm sure there's a verbiage for it, but it literally goes down, swoops up, swoops back down. So you have, like, if I set it flat on the ground, there's three pads that are sitting on the ground. There's a tiny little protective scraping piece in the back. I don't know what it is. For dragging back. It might be in the front. Don't remember because I feel like it has absolutely no value. If I'm dragging this kayak, my kayak is dragging on the face or the bottom, and it's not dragging on that little tiny protective scraping piece. I think that's it. I'm going to go.